Hello and welcome to The Flow, the place to engage the contemplative spirituality tradition first used in early Christianity, when deep time was accepted and cherished. Those in The Flow recognize the difference between chronological time and the fullness of time. Living into the fullness of time allows people the opportunity to live into the wonder of each and every moment. Let's begin our time together by washing away the week. If you wish, you can press the pause button and wash your hands along with the video experiencing the fullness of each word and action. I wash my hands. I now wash my soul of the past week. I wash away the times I refuse to live in the now. I cleanse fear which keeps me from truths about myself and others. I remove the stain of the false self, placing my importance over and above the greater good. I wash away the belief that everything must be explained or understood. I cleanse nightmares of the past, knowing that failure is a byproduct of growth. I bathe in the reality that God is love, fullness, and joy. I dry my hands feeling God's simple smile, and that is good enough. This month, a new segment has been added. Since contemplation time moves slower than chronological time, this exercise will take months. All I ask is that you participate as best you can. This exercise is based on a story told by Richard Rohr at a talk he gave in the UK and was used in one of his books, which can be found in the box below. It tells the story about a boy who came to his rabbi saying he thought he understood the concept of loving family and neighbors and people he knew. But since God was not visible and physical, he could not grasp or understand how to love God. This story has been adapted to use on the flow as an exercise at our weekly gatherings. The instruction given is something you can do throughout the week, and I hope you decide to participate. In order to love God and neighbor, first learn to love dirt. This week, pay attention to the soil under your feet. Seek out dirt and consider its importance for life, the life of all of us cohabitating on our planet. Consider its richness and what it offers to all of us. In order to love God and neighbor, first Learn to love dirt.
What goes on in those silent depths during the time of centering prayer is no one's business, not even your own. It is between your innermost being and God, that place where St. Augustine once said, God is closer to your soul than you are yourself. Your own subjective experience of prayer may be that nothing happened except for the more or less continuous motion of letting go of thoughts. But in the depths of your being, in fact, plenty has been going on, and things are quietly but firmly being rearranged. That interior rearrangement, or to give it a rightful name, that interior awakening, is the real business of centering prayer. Jesus sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which are worth about a penny. Then he called his disciples and said to them, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury, for all of them have contributed out of their abundance, but she out of her poverty has put in everything she had all she had to live on. How did you feel hearing this passage? What might the narrative say about you? What made you feel comfortable or uncomfortable? Jesus sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which are worth about a penny. Then he called his disciples and said to them, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury for all of them have contributed out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. What word or phrase spoke to you? Why did this word or phrase speak to you? What is the spirit 
trying to say. Jesus' theology reverses the notion of abundance. You'd think those who have a lot of material things have abundance, but this might not be the case. Those trapped with abundance may feel as though they have to have something to maintain. You see, to have more, you need more. Abundance can feel like a trap, just like when the alcoholic finally realizes they will never have enough alcohol. This means that they are actually living with scarcity because they need more and more to make them happy. You see, there is never enough. Those who have a secure, deep relationship with God actually need less to make them happy. I don't think it is always a conscious effort to scale down, but a realization that less or more is inconsequential. Happiness does not require proof through possessions to provide abundance. Abundance is a state of mind. I'm reminded of a short statement found in Luke's Acts where it is written, And they all had enough. The big question, though, and the big question for now is, what is enough? Truly, I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury, for all of them have contributed out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. In out-of-the-way places of the heart, where your thoughts never think to wander, this beginning has been quietly forming, waiting until you were ready to emerge. For a long time it has watched your desire, feeling the emptiness growing inside you, noticing how you willed yourself on, still unable to leave what you had outgrown. It watched you play with the seduction of safety and the gray promises that sameness whispered, heard the waves of turmoil rise and relent, wondered, would you always live like this? Then the delight when your courage kindled. And out you stepped onto new ground. Your eyes young again with energy and dream. A path of plentitude opening before you. 
though your destination is not clear, you can trust the promise of this opening. Unfurl yourself into the grace of beginning that is at one with your life's desire. Awaken your spirit to adventure. Hold nothing back. Learn to find ease and risk. Soon you will be home in a new rhythm, for your soul senses the world that awaits you. May the God of love bring us all joy. May the cosmic Christ enable empathy and understanding. And may the spirit of truth open our eyes to the wonders of each encounter. Let us walk in love. Let us go in peace.